the, my approach to the patient with AML takes into account host and disease factors. Host factors means the patient's age and whether or not they have comorbid diseases such as heart disease and kidney disease. Very importantly, I also take into account the biology of the disease. For example, whether it's a new presentation, which we call de novo AML, or whether the AML has occurred in the setting of a prior myelodysplastic syndrome, or whether the patient's had prior chemotherapy for another cancer. Taking all these things into account, I determine what the best initial therapy, and I'm also considering what the best subsequent therapy might be for a patient who achieves remission with whatever I give him or her initially. Well, for adults who are considered fit enough, number one, and number two, likely to benefit from standard induction therapy, the standard induction therapy for good or ill hasn't changed for the past 30 years, and that's commonly known as three plus seven, or some people like to say seven plus three chemotherapy, which is three days of an anthracycline, usually either donorubicin or idorubicin, plus seven days of a continuous infusional cytarabine. If three and seven is given, a bone marrow should be done approximately 14 days after it starts to determine if another cycle of induction, which could consist of a repeat three and seven or uh, two and five, which is two days of anthracycline and five days of cytarabine to be given. About 30% of patients require a second induction course to achieve remission. Clinical utility of minimal residual disease monitoring in non-APL AML, I would say is highly controversial at the moment. How best to use it is dependent upon the geographic place that the doctor resides and the techniques used to measure MRD or minimal residual disease in AML. It certainly makes a lot of sense to get away from the only historic measurement of response we had, which is looking under the light microscope and counting the blast, which these more sensitive techniques, such as flow cytometry and gene sequencing, allow us to do. The problem is we haven't really nailed down how to use this. Uh, just yesterday, uh, I heard Dr. Goldstone from uh, the UK make a very profound and clear-cut assessment of MRD if it's used to determine how well a patient's responded after initial therapy. To wit, if a patient has MRD detectability, we know that their outcome after a stem cell transplant is inferior. So should we do it? If they don't have MRD detectability with a sensitive assay, maybe they don't need a transplant. So it becomes very confusing as to how to use this when making post-treatment decisions in AML. In Europe, the standard induction therapy is still the so-called 7 plus 3. So it's not so different that as compared to the uh, conventional induction treatment in the U.S. Maybe there is some differences in the dosage of, of, of anthracycline or, or citarabine, but not that much. Uh, maybe the most important difference is the use of idarubicin rather than donorubicin as an anthracycline, because idarubicin is very frequently used in Europe uh, and uh, other worlds the standard treatment is quite similar. In AML, when you are giving induction treatment to, to a patient, your goal, your primary goal is to get a complete remission. And to get a complete remission is defined by the disappearance of the leukemic cell in the bone marrow and in the blood and in other tissues when there are extramedullary disease. Uh, and the associated with the recovery of platelet counts and neutrophil counts in the blood. So this is a definition of complete remission. This is very important to get complete remission as a first step to cure the patients. Recently, uh, uh, the problem of minimal residual disease emerged, as in other diseases, for instance, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So there is uh, a lot of effort currently to, to try to, to measure the level of minimal residual disease in a patient with complete remission. So there are several techniques to do that, and, and it could be very, very important in, in next development to, to standardize these techniques in order to, to, to have a new definition of what is really a remission. Is it only a morphological remission on microscope uh, examination? Or do we need more? Do we need to have a molecular remission without any uh, minimal residual disease or a flow remission when you are measuring MRD, minimal residual disease, 
on the basis of, of, of flow cytometry.